Okay, well, you make an important case, but here's my counter case. <laughs> okay. Zuljin is played by America. What do you want? We got axe. There was an interesting, <laughs> there was an interesting debate <laughs> on Twitter. I'm not gonna lie. Um, and it, I tried to take my uh, EU hat off sure. and, and kind of absorb some of that information. Um, and it was an interesting argument that was made. I still don't know either way because mm -hmm. obviously we haven't seen it in Europe at all, but we've seen quite a bit of it in North America. And I'm intrigued to see how it could fit into Europe. Um, but until I see it executed on yeah. our stage, I'm not sold just yet. So my honest thought is I actually think he's decent against double warrior comps because of his uh, Q and yeah. his grievous throws. But uh, looks like we're actually ready here. Tuma Spider Queen. Let's go ahead and get it done here. Expert taking on Fnatic. Game number one. All right, we're back in. Great stuff. Uh, so Fnatic here has a little bit of a slight extra lease on life in the early game, but it's really not a huge difference uh, compared to... <laughs> what we saw there before. Sorry, I've got hiccups. Bless you. Oof. I hope you're okay. Is your oh, heart fine. okay? Yeah. All right, good. S skip to beat, skip to beat. <laughs> so here on the left is Fnatic, and to the far right, the red team is going to be Team Expert. Fight Redoing coward. game number one. We are starting uh, scratch free here <laughs> from our teams. Kirsten just happy here, clapping yeah. on that Malfurion. The thing is, as much as you know, people may be on looking and saying, oh, but Team Expert had a little bit of a lead. I think that obviously Team Expert as well understands that yeah. it, it wasn't monumental. Uh, you can see them having fun. Uh, here to start things off. So definitely no bad blood uh, in regards to the ruling. Uh, so these guys are happy and fine uh, as we get back into game number one, already delaying out the wave because Nazebo can delay for quite a long time with his zombie wall, which may have happened, but he has full mana, so maybe not. All right, so the clash here in the middle will occur. Nick on the bottom left is Wubby here. On to Haka, sniffing out that Zeratone. Will not be able to grab him here. Breeze goes for some harassment, and Bad Vinny will walk away. It's always interesting when you have a Leor on the team. I always feel like he is guaranteed to be the first one to die. So if he survives <laughs> that mid that mid clash, yeah. you're in a good spot. And actually, I was going to bring up exactly the same thing because if there's any ever any time to actually focus Leoric, it's probably in that first engagement because he doesn't have hardened bones at level four. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can get him before level four, great. If you can't, sorry. Fnatic with the aggression here, though, but Breeze maybe being too aggressive. Nick chasing him down. We'll be able to walk in for a little more damage. Breeze with the counterattack here on the smite. Pressure in the bottom lane already as Ragnaros is set up, and uh, we have the exchanges occurring for our team. Fnatic is now pushing in the top lane, and ADRD will attempt to hold. Decisive basing by Breeze. Uh, he just needs to know that his team's going to be soaking these lanes fine. Just going back, getting himself healed up and good to go because he knows he's going to need a lot of that health for when it comes to time to ch ch contest those turn-in points. Can't be milling around in the middle of the map here without some health. And obviously, you don't really want to cost Smexy too much mana as well in the early stages of the game. So just get back there, come back. It doesn't take too long. Yeah, it's actually pretty insane how Rhaegar has decent mana constraints. If you're spamming your totem, you're spamming your Q, you're going to have a hard time around level 6, level 7, which way can be important to make sure to have that mana available. So Claris on the money there. And also you don't really see Feral Heart as much uh, in Europe now. You see more of the uh, Healing Totem yeah. coming into play. So it's not like our Regars here in the European scene have as much mana regen than maybe your usual Hero League Regar, etc., etc. Well, Regar is also being played as more of a, a pseudo Malfurion in a way, except mm. he hits a three-prong heal. Uh, he sits more back now, and so the Healing Ward just really fits, especially in this double warrior composition you see so much. That 3% heal uh, can be incredibly impactful. So, uh, yep, the Healing Ward will be the choice here at level four for our Regar. On to the right side, same talent builds for our teams as well. Zebo picking up that Blood Ritual to continue with his healing. And uh, the turn-ins have begun for Fnatic. 26 gems on them, but 19 currently in the bank. Oh yeah, nice tempo there by Expert to try and get the turn-in, but Fnatic well on top of it. Just throwing in all kinds of stuff to deter. And likewise, we'll be just sitting around there. Nazeba will fall, though. First blow of the game. Going your Fnatic, picking off ADRD on that Nazebo. Bad Vinny will come in for the harassment. Did the gems get picked up? Yes. Isn't that exactly the same thing that happened last game? <laughs> our, our last attempt at this game. <laughs> and Nazebo just kind of got caught off early. Poor um, Nazebo, man. Yeah. Just the pickings here for Fnatic. On our way to level seven soon, but the turn-ins continue for our two teams. We do have uh, Nick consistently working in that harassment. And man, that's one of the hardest things to do with Zeratul, is you have to harass. Uh, but you're just so fearful for your life constantly. You're playing around these major CCs. Luckily for them, 
The only major CC that is in here for the early game is Dahaka's drag. Now, yeah. of course, later on when we get heroics popped out, the silence can be monumental from Sylvanas if she does connect it. Yeah, gotta agree. Um, that's uh, a little bit of comfort for Zeratul early on in this game. Now, one thing to look at is that Fnatic have established themselves better here uh, and well in the early game. Uh, so they've got themselves good turn-ins, nice and fast, uh, and are rotating in a very, very comfortable pace here. So they could get themselves a web weaver turn in. And then we can see the power of the Sylvanas really come into play. Yep, that's where she gets powerful. Bad Ooh. Finny will make do his best here to make sure that does not occur. The Grand Hope hitting Swippy as well as the big swing there. Smexy though does get locked in by ADRD. Here comes Nick for the kill, but Smexy does retreat. Bad Finny low on health now for the counterattack from Fnatic. Both teams will walk away, but they are definitely bruised. And I think that's the best thing about Nazebo in the meta right now, which is not necessarily like, oh, wow, I'm level 20 and I'm going to be able to do big, big damage. It's the fact that the zombie wall is actually just a pain, just yeah. an, a real, real pain to actually have to deal with. And Nick yesterday was landing them left, right, and center. And uh, ADRD, so far, proven okay, despite that little death at the beginning. We'll be with him drag, but yeah, I agree with you. That the zombie wall, while you don't have to hit anyone in the center, just having that control of space, yeah, yeah. it's just so powerful. It's uh, a pseudo Jaina Blizzard in a way. Uh, just less damage, obviously, but in terms of control, it's just that good. Uh, 25 to 49 in gems. Fnatic is so close to getting a turn in. And we will be seeing uh, experts doing their best to prevent that turn in from occurring. Well beyond the bottom right, it does have 14 gems. Ragnaros is sharking up, and the turn in does hit here. For Fnatic, they will have the first blue web weavers here All right, of the game. So, so where is Sylvanas going to allocate her resources? Um, she's currently mid, looking to push on quite heavily here with this. Four mid, in fact, with Smexy just waiting in the back, not even lunging forward to do any little bits of extra damage. Because he knows that they can't really see behind that wall. Apart from when Shadow Dagger went in and then spread a little bit of poison, they can't see behind that wall. So they didn't know where Nazebo was. Now they do, though. So they can maybe accommodate that a little bit more. Yeah, this is a common strategy. Just push in the middle lane and then decide where the least amount of resources went for Expert and then go mm -hmm. push that lane instead. Uh, and top lane will be the choice here for the team. One of the best lanes you can get with the boss later on being a possible pick. Nick did clear slightly, but with the big wave here and half a web weaver, we should be able to get turrets for Fnatic and get closer to that ever looming goal of game level 10. Yeah, so Fnatic's playing it steady. They could have quite easily with Sylvanas and a, and a few more members sat around at a fort and tried to push that down, but they're just looking for towers. So they're playing a steady game. They're just, as you say, looking for that 10, not looking for big damage early on. And then from that point, they could take a team fight. Here comes Nick to reinforce, and Fnatic's just going to back off. Look for the rotation. Spider is hitting quite nice, taking him down. Gosh, almost a half health there. Really hurts on Greyman in particular without the ability to heal. Bad Benny in the front line. Nick getting his turn in as well, trying to bait Fnatic into a potential fight or get a turn in. There is a fight, so Expert gets a kill before level 10. ADRD, though, does allow the trade to happen one for one, and Fnatic will take the advantage with a 10 here popping. All right, so it's going to be the same heroics as we expected to happen prior. Uh, so this has got a lot of power behind it. The good turn in, though, by Team Expert to try and equalize out those odds. I uh, really like that. It alleviates a lot of the pressure that Fnatic can put on with level 10. So they'll get theirs in a nice little window. But that means now, uh, if, they, if they force the issue, then they could get something done with these web weavers. But I think Fnatic might be okay in cleaning a lot of this up. Yeah, they should be fine. With Sylvanas being available, Grammy in a lane, as long as he doesn't get isolated by a two-on-one, should be good to go, especially with Dahaka floating around. So Grammy and Dahaka will hold the bottom lane. Sylvanas in the mid will hold for now. So the major pressure from Expert should be in the top lane after they grab these turrets, but they start to move down for a second here, looking for maybe pick on Grammy, but Grammy does retreat nicely. Breeze jumping over with an Eldruins, keeping Expert here. The funny thing is, is there's very little CC on either side. <laughs> I mean, apart from the drag, what other real stuns are there across these two teams? It's all slows, it's roots, it's it's not really something that's proper hard lockdown. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting to see how these two comps evolved into one another. And now, just attempts at trying to find a fight. Look at how aggressive experts being with their positioning. Yeah, expert does control. The more CC here, they have the Twilight Dream, they have Ragnaros, they have Void Prison, but in terms of just hard basic abilities in terms of stuns, yeah, you're completely correct here. Both Mid. teams uh, feeling a bit off there. Oh, middle, there is an engagement. Quackness does hop on Blade and applies a decent amount of damage there. Blade will be able to retreat, but he is hurting here. Bad Benny on half HP. Nick in the back left, he still has his Void Prison. 
does not decide to engage. Fnatic just too spread out to make anything happen. So the funny thing is, is now we're at two kills to one kill. Uh, we're with a little bit of a lead in terms of experts' experience and one turn in each. So we're basically exactly where we were. <laughs> yeah. Um, because Fnatic probably would have got a turn in uh, very soon uh, at the end of that game. And that's going to be an attack on towards Zeratul. He goes down. Nick falls. That's a lot of gems he's lost there. And they're just trying to guard from Bad Benny. And they do manage to make them disappear. Very good zoning by Fnatic. Yeah, a decent amount of chunk of uh, gems not available for Expert. Fnatic getting the pick off on Zeratul. That drag, man, if it does connect. Those mobile heroes, man, will just have such a hard time with the retreats. Another drag occurring here for Wubby hitting Bad Benny, but it was just used to buy time for Twimby to get a turn in. Second Web Weaver phase will hit here for Fnatic. Yeah, this is, so this can do something. Uh, Zeratul's in, oh, okay, no, Zeratul will be there by the time they actually descend, so that is fine. And of course, one thing that's important that Nick did there was, yes, he died, but he didn't pop Void Prism to try and save himself in some kind of crazy panic. Good control. Yeah, very good control. Good trigger finger. All right, so pressure in the middle. The standard push from Schwimpy, getting some damage on the fort here while the Webbier starts sieging away. Blade will use a Molten Core, and that is the indicator from Fnatic to rotate down to a different lane. The one pushed in right now is bottom lane as Webby pushed it in. A drag on Bad Benny should be able to walk away. He starts to move out. Breeze in the front lane, though. But the main tool here Blood is to loss. grab this fort. The Bloodlust, though, and Bad Benny gets focused down. Sanctification uses well. There's the Wailing Arrow. They won't get much more, but they definitely get a fort. Yeah, that Wailing Arrow could have got more value if it wasn't for the Entomb that came down and kind of blocked Sylvanas in for the moment. But Quacknix trying to block out ADRD on the right-hand side. That's going to be a Sulfura smash. As Bad Benny uh, is going to res in a little bit of time, but that's a great route on towards two. Schwimpy and Nesmexi will get out from the bottom there. So Kirsten did a good job to follow up on the Void Prism, but if the Sulfura smash had come after the Void Prism, it would have been super impactful. But here comes Bad Benny. Yeah, Bad Benny respawning here. Does get the kill on Tyrio. Quacknix low on help in the back left. Rhaegar trying to keep him alive. Swimpy should be able to retreat, but Wubby has oh. to burrow away, and good thing he does, as he has a number of gems on him, I believe nearly 40. Yeah, and again, it comes back to a good thing that there isn't really that many stuns on either side. Yeah. The fact that Dehaka actually gains so much strength against a comp like this, because there's just not much to bring him out of that burrow, uh, is really, really powerful in those kinds of situations. So great escape. Great escape indeed. That could have been two takedowns from Expert, and it would have been a really good trade for them, especially after the Leor came back on the field. 44 gems here, 46 now, four Experts. Would love to drop those off soon. They aren't close enough to a turn in, though. Wubby in the top right does see Bad Benny is coming in. The Drain Hope coming out, and he should be able to retreat away. And uh, the pressure now comes in from Expert to get this turn in. Dead even on experience right now, which is cool to see. Uh, and if uh, Team Expert manages to grab themselves one of the forts in that pocket of experience, it will be absolutely uh, dead even. Maybe just a little bit slightly in favor of Team Expert. Four for two kills right now but it's clear that Team Expert is doing a good job of soaking uh, across these couple of lanes. Slight mistake from Fnatic. They missed out on experience in the top left lane, mm. uh, which could have put them towards 15, but also they lost some damage on their fort. They just didn't quite manage that wave well enough. Uh, but still, slightly ahead, setting up for a turn in. Bad Benny in the top right here is Wubby dropping off his gems. They'll need one more, and Breeze does Damn. have it. There's a turn in. Yeah, that's good. That's really good. So. Fnatic starting to establish their dominance that they normally do on this map, unless they're, of course, going up against a team like Misfits, etc., uh, which is a little bit more up in the air. But this Web Weaver turn in again could get the entire outer rim of forts, speaking in Star Wars space terms. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> going to move out of that, get the Sanctification on towards Greyman in the middle of that Entomb. No pressure was coming along, though, so the Entomb came down, but there wasn't really much follow-up onto Greyman. I wonder if the Sanctification was a bit of a waste. There's a drag from Bad Bang to stop the Leor uh, from being too aggressive, though. Molten Core has been popped, Ooh. will be taking some damage, will be able to start healing up, and uh, major cooldowns used for both teams, but the Web Weavers continue to push in the top and the bottom. So he used his essence, so he didn't use his adaptations. That's really important for Wobby. He can still be very impactful in the fight to potentially come once they get themselves level 16, if they want to go for it. But Team Expert has you know, done really well about getting their own level 16 during all of this as well. Yeah, good soak. But the Web Weavers still in the bottom, so Fnatic just moves to the top here to put pressure on this fort so that Web Weavers can get more value if Expert doesn't run down and defend it. So Expert decides to go for the engage. I like this call. There's the Entomb. So Fierce Match does not connect. Cleanse instantly for Quacknix, and he's able to go for the throw on ADRD. ADRD out of position. He will pop Ice Block. Can he survive? Good Void Prison here from Nick. 
And then he's going to end up going down. That was a great escape, actually, once again here from Quacknix, from that Entomb, to actually put pressure on whilst he's escaping as well. Yeah. And that's going to allow Fnatic here to just seize control completely now. They claim this quadrant of the map for their own. They grab the fort, and still that Webweaver is still in the bottom lane pushing. It did damage to the entire keep wall here. So now a keep is exposed for Team Expert, and the boss will be the instant grab from Fnatic. When you have a Grey Maid and you have killed one, two members, you can always do this. Go for the boss if there's no Mighty Gust or a Terrier on the opposing team. Uh, so here we are, Quacknix taking the boss with his team. Great pressure now on the top keep. You can see all they need is the flick of a switch to really seize the pressure themselves. And, and yeah, uh, the good old usual EU uh, meta there, as soon as you take a boss from someone after a kill, the opposing team always gets <laughs> a web weaver turn in. There's only once that hasn't happened, I think, uh, in the entire of HTC Europe. It's a good uh, strategy. Yeah. It's, uh, it kind of equalizes things out a little bit. The boss is going to get some value for sure, uh, but at least the web weavers can do stuff in the other lanes. Unfortunately, though, Fnatic is in a great spot to defend against that kind of push. They have yep. the Hawk already in the middle lane, clearing out that Web Weaver, and all they can do is supplement this push for a, a tight time here. Leor goes for the Entomb, Gargantuan pops out as well. Greymane is just staying alive, though, as Smexy has his watchful eye on him. All right, so just backing off now. Blade in pursuit with ADRD, etc. As they're looking to slow down Breeze, but he does have Eldruin's mind to get away if needs be. And they'll clean up all of these Web Weavers. They still haven't lost a fort. Looks like pressure is going to be put onto the top one here, as Team Expert knows that they need those pockets of experience. Nick lurking on the left-hand side. Just in case anybody wants to rotate around, they're going to guarantee themselves. Look at the gingerbread man smacking that far. Cool. A flank, though, from Breeze on the right side. Moving in, Nick has been spotted. Wubby on the top Wubby. right. They have separated the team here. It's a four on the left, one on the right. They are looking for Nick. They are chasing him. Swimpy going in as well, hoping to grab that Zeratul, but they have split him so far yeah. now that Fnatic can come back. The Molten Core should be available soon. This is a scary little spot for Team Expert, but Fnatic doesn't want to take it. Interesting. Molten Core scary, man. Yeah, yeah. So many times watched in the HEC where a 4 5 Vive is broken out, but Ragnaros becoming the Ragnaros king he is for a slight amount of time is just so destructive. The Fnatic just pulls away, doesn't risk it. I'm wondering if they could have stopped him. Yeah, hmm. Willing Arrow could have but it would have to be on point. It's a really ca fast cast animation. Yeah, oh well, oh well. Team Expert now gonna try and prep some pressure on towards Breeze, half health. Backs on away. The usual tank build that we see from Material now isn't very sustainable for itself. You don't get things like Amplified Healing. You don't get things like Regen Globe Level 1. You just go for damage utility. So you do have to be very careful when you're playing that Tyrael as yep. a warrior. It's all about lockdown, getting isolation, and punishing your opponents for mistakes. I do want to commend Expert, though. They are hitting the average game lead time for Fnatic on this battleground, and they are tied with them. Yep. 19 and 19. Both teams have yet to lose a keep. Expert is playing this well. They seem to be much more in control compared to what we saw yesterday against Ingtos. I love it. I mean, this is this is the story of Team Expert. It's Expert going up against the big three yeah. and how well that they can hold on. We saw them against Dingtas yesterday. It didn't quite hit the mark, even though they could have potentially gone up 2-0 in that series. And now bringing the fight to Fnatic. I'm loving it. I, we're only halfway through this narrative for Team Expert because, of course, they'll be going up against Misfits uh, next week. The main goal for both teams is to get that turn in. Grab some Web Weavers, but also get level 20. Uh, right now, Expert's more in control. They have slightly more gems, so they can dictate the face here and force Fnatic to come in for an engage, or they can go for the level 20, uh, which they are so close to hitting here. Both teams actually dead yeah. even, it looks like. It's great. Yeah. Breeze dropping off the gems. They do have the full 13 for the uh, turn in. Expert does. They dropped off a few. Three more left. They're protecting their teammates so they can get the turn in. Yeah. Leorg will turn it in. And it's important to note that on Tomb of the Spider Queen that the longer the game goes on, the harder it is for you to collect gems because mm -hmm. the waves are just sporadically all over the place. They could be pushed up really far. Uh, the, the distance between one pushed up really far and one pushed really back uh, for, to the wards of the bottom lane is super long distance. So that was a slow, methodical process. The Team Expert won out on, and now they should be able to get some good value off, especially this top Web Weaver. They, they really want a key. They really do. That yeah, they do. And they should be able to get it with the Siege here from Nazebo, especially now the level 20. The Vile Infection quest is completed, so they are going to go with that yeah. level 20. Quagnix does dive in, gets the Entomb here from Bad Benny, so the isolation will be missing here from Expert. Getting the keep, 
and threatening a Molten Core Shrimpy. is scary. Look at the amount of damage those spiders, spiders do. Yeah, and Rhaegar does an okay job of healing it, but he can only do a chunk of the healing. You're going to have a hard time, and it's going to take a while for him to heal back that damage yeah. applied here from the Zebo. And what's important is is that um, Rhaegar going Bloodlust, that, that is not a heroic that's effective in a poke war. Um, so Nazebo technically has the advantage over Rhaegar's healing right now compared to having something like Ancestral Heal, but here comes Tyrael on the right-hand side. Tries to go for the block there. The hacker goes in for the drag, doesn't quite hit things. Void Prism's been used, trying to isolate the warriors away from their damage dealers, but they weren't successful in blowing anybody up. So now Expert's probably going to have to retreat on out, but Molten Core's coming down, so that's basically the retreat thing. It's like, we dare you to come at us. We dare you. With the Moncor being used, all of Fnatic just retreated to the bottom left. But that's good. That's actually a really good call there. That they, they got the engage. Mm. They forced a Void Prison. The Void Prison, unfortunately, could not be effective because there were so many people squishy. And then they got the Ragnarok's Molten Core. But they got the keep. They, they got their ejection complete. They got the keep, which is nice. That's going to be sanctification, though. Looking put damage on towards Blade. He goes down. Ragnaros falls. Fnatic gets what they set out to do here in this first game as Bad Benny going to be the next victim here. And that is Fnatic absolutely going on a rampage. Nick was trying to put pressure on towards Shrimpy, but I don't think it's going to be for anything here. As Nick, does he have rewind? Can he get away? No, he will not. Three go down. Fnatic absolutely. Absolutely, on the victory march. Solid play there from Swimpy, staying alive, using his bolt, using the haunting wave to stay away from the Zeratul, and then Smexy showing up with a kill to the last second defense. Three members taken out, and Sylvanas will take her reward of damaging the keep. Here it is, low on health. 15 seconds until the orcs up, but 30 seconds until Ragnaros is available. Fnatic pushing for the keep, clear the wave, have Wubby tank it all. They are doing just that. Here's Breeze as well. No sanctification, but they shouldn't have too much of a problem of focusing down this core. And it's falling here, 80% down to 70. A big silence here from Kursen. Swimpy finally does fall, uses his Welling Arrow, 30%. Quagnus is actually uh, getting pretty low here. Bad Vinny bringing the no, attacks as well. No, Smexy no, low no. same time, 10%. He's gonna blow up. He's gonna blow up. If he gets a 6%, he's got this. He's if he gets a 6%. It's 8. It's no, 8 no. 8%. And the ammo? No, it's not good enough. What? It's not good enough. A 2% core rush. Kalaris, get out of here. No! Already you've ruined another game. How? Here in HTC Europe, all of the Gru here from Team Experts start to head to the top lane. They start to head for the core, and they should have this on lock. Kalaris, this is you. This is all you, man. Here goes Kersen, just pushing. Zerto in the top right. Expert, somehow, some way, holds against Fnatic. Their best map here in HEC Europe with a 4 0. Oh, it is now 4 1 as Expert will take the core and happily take the lead in this series as best of five. Congratulations to them. You look so stern, man. You look so upset. But I think it's okay because it's your fault. 100%. <laughs> It, that was so close, because if Tyrael did get to 6%, they can finish the core, and they'd be good to go. Uh, sadly, that was not what happened, and Fnatic will lose this game. Expert will go up 1-0 over their opponents. I'm just going to throw these books on the floor. And <laughs> so here's the defense again. I... So let's let's take a look at this. The silence actually does quite a lot from mm -hmm. Kirsten, considering he shuts down uh, a good chunk of the damages that are coming out. He actually goes on towards Sylvanas. Uh, it's probably with one of the better people to silence over, say, Quacknix, because Quacknix is all auto attack at that point, yep. right? So try and silencing the Sylvanas there. It's probably the best way you're going to deny some damage, which uh, is a very clever move and. And the 8% and then the armor comes in, 2% left, and that is game from there. It's <laughs> it's so unfortunate. And the thing is, I too, just... if we break down that replay, uh, Quacknix is actually, his inner beast was slowed down by that silence, so we actually couldn't work into the attack. And right. he tried to eat out instantly to get yeah. the orc off his face, which ruined the DPS that he had on Greymane. Had he gotten one more swipe there instead of going into actual human form, that could have been game over. So many little things, unfortunately, hurting Fnatic there with that win. So many little things, but we all know the real thing that hurt them. The real thing here. I this just... guy, Prince Charming, more like Prince Ruiner. We'll be right back for game number two. Thank you for joining us in game number one.